Okay, I've sold more single bevel broadheads probably from the either the toilet era or the golden era of compound bows and single bevel broadheads. I would say around 2015 to 2020, 2015 to 2000, maybe 22. Maybe it's still going. In a lot of circles, I think it's going even stronger, right? Because everybody's making a single bevel broadhead. But during this time, you had um, A Boyer. Grizzly, not Grizzly stick, but Grizzly, um, that made glue on, you know, a lot of glue on broadheads or um, a lot of things for traditional archery that the compound bow and crossbow guys would, would get into or read the Ashby reports or whatever. And during this time from 2015 to 2020, um, there wasn't really too many, if any, you know, you could count on one hand of people making uh, machine single bevel broadheads. So I probably sold more single bevel broadheads than anybody. And this is um, a great way to go bankrupt as an archery company. And I would say, yeah, we're like the Lamborghini and Ferrari of archery. Well, Lamborghini and Ferrari have filed for bankruptcy more times than anybody could count. Because you're not making the money on the Lamborghinis and Ferraris. You're making the money on the Fords, Chevys, Dodges, Kia, Hyundai, Honda, Toyota. You know, you, you, you're not, you can sell a Ferrari for $2 million, you know, 10 Ferraris, or you could sell however many F-150s Ford sells, a lot, you know, for, geez, with a dollar dime, though, I guess those things are up there at 70,000 bucks for a 150, something like that, ridiculous, but I digress. You get the idea. Um, I probably sold more of these than anybody. Um, single bevel broadheads, they're not a great tool for North American game for compound hunters, I don't think. Crossbow hunters because of this. When you when you guys get these, the majority of you don't know how to sharpen anything. You can hardly sharpen a pocket knife if you take it through a drag through sharpener. Why is that? I don't know. Some of you could sharpen things better than anybody. But most of you can't sharpen anything. So what you do, you give me a... Uh, 400 bucks or 500 bucks for three broadheads, single bevel broadheads, and they ship them to you. And then you call me next day, I don't know what I'm gonna tell my wife, I just tried to sharpen these, I ruined them. Uh, I don't know what to do. And then me being bleeding hard, I say, if you send them back to me, I'll send you another pack. That doubles the price of them for everybody. So if they're $400 for three, for USAS seven tool steel, solid stock that we cut away and throw in the garbage and just have come out with one broadhead for you, um, that's the process, you know, to, to make those things. Then you just doubled the price, the already high price of them broadheads. So most of you ruin them. Um, the other thing is, people have no idea about sharpness. It's edge bevel integrity, not sharpness. If you put a broadhead in your quiver foam, which none of my broadheads with my labels on it do that, but most broadheads you put in quiver foam and they go, they're dull. They go dull. Well, if the quiver foam dull, dulls your broadhead, it means your blades are too thin, um, your bevel degree angle, the number is too low, your heat treat could be wrong, but mostly your blades are too thin and your bevel degree is really made for perceived sharpness and not edge bevel integrity. Because if your bevel degree number is so low that you can get it so sharp that you can split a hair in half and there's nothing there around the bevel supporting the bevel, you know, like this, instead of like this, uh, with metal, there's no metal there, when you put that in your quiver foam, it goes, it goes dull just by doing this. So when you shoot it into a, a deer or an antelope even, a little antelope, pronghorn, your, your broadhead runs dull through that whole body cavity if your quiver foam, you don't get dull the thing. So you should be able to put my broadheads in your quiver foam for years and still be able to remove your thumbnail material, you know, like dust, slough off your thumbnail material. Um, so, whether it is a 10 degree single bevel, I think the most you can get right now, at least you can get is 20 degree, which are, in my opinion, garbage. If, that, if that's what you like, though, shoot them. Or a 45 degree single bevel, which is the best angle for bi-directional mechanical advantage, which is doing work across two planes at the same time to get that onside bone split. You get one chance to energy dump and split that onside bone. That's all single bevels are good for, which is really important for buffalo and dangerous game. 
but for our buffalo hunters. Super, this is the most important thing. But for North America game, I'm not so sure single bobble. Even with my um, recurving longbow, sometimes I like my tree sharks, my land sharks better. And I shoot my own broadheads too, you know. But um, a grizzly or a boyer is really nice with my um, longbow. And I got bear shaft to them perfectly, but um, now they don't cut better. They don't. They definitely do not cut better than double bobble. And cutting is not about sharpness. Cutting is not about this in a broadhead application. They are not knives. They are not scalpels. They're broadheads. It's, they're more like metal punches and axes. How they work. Axes have a sixty degree bevel for a reason. You know, you can still get axes where you can shave your face with a sixty degree bevel, real thick bladed, or axe. You know, would be thick bladed broadhead, right? Thicker than anything in the world. Um, but single bevels of all kinds. You guys can't sharpen them. I don't care if they're a 20 degree bevel or 45 degree bevel, and you turn them to um, double bevels. You're better off leaving them dull and shooting them and hoping you got edge bevel integrity because that's more important for cutting than, than sharpness. Sharpness does not matter at all in most of these broadhead designs because the broadhead designs are so misguided. Most of what we do in the archery industry is based on social norms. It just, it just is. I'm sorry it is. I'm not going to go into a five hour rant about it or deep, deep sea dive about it, but it just is, okay? I got stone points. They, they, they have planned mechanical cutting and some of them use point based cutting. Some of them don't and plan mechanical cutting and they've been cutting things since before Christ. And they're cutting stuff now. Um, they got edge bevel integrity, perpetual forever. Um, we have broadheads that are premium broadheads that guys go out and buy and celebrities shoot that don't have edge bevel retention or edge bevel integrity through a body cavity. And I'm not talking about going through a body cavity and hitting dirt or hitting a stone. I'm talking about just going through a body cavity. Does that mean I want to get shot with one? No. Does that mean they suck? No. Does that mean they're worse than a sharp stick? Some of them I think are, but no, it doesn't. Doesn't, you know, does that mean they won't kill something? No, I'd kill something with this big old field point if I shot it through the lungs, double lungs. So, um, stop shooting single bevels if you can't, um, if you ruin the bevel. If you, you can shoot one if you can't sharpen it, just don't sharpen it. I know I'm gonna get grief for that, but uh, I've been obsessed with sharpening things, having super sharp things for my whole life because that's the first thing we learned. Most important thing is sharp broadhead. No, it's not. When you start making broadheads, you realize the most important thing is edge bevel integrity and engineering a broadhead that could be a broadhead. Most of our broadheads are not. We get away with it because they're made of steel, to be honest with you. And they kill when the bevel fails or they just kill dull. Um, the other thing with single bevels, is they unscrew. So a lot of guys will shoot an arrow, bare shaft, no feathers fletching, with a, a release aid, maybe they got a hinge release, and they got their little thing, their little uh, equipment here, whatever that pouch is, and then they got their fancy back bar. And I'll run a quiverizer. I'll run a quiverizer because it's like a tight spot quiver, you know, so you can run it like that or out here. But I'm not gonna run all that stuff, but if you like running that stuff, run this stuff, it's fine. But they get out there and they get up tall and good form, and they shoot, and then they see in slow motion what way their arrow rotates, and then they go shoot left helical because their arrow rotates to the left. Well, when you screw in your field point even, and you shoot in a bag target, you wonder why, why is your field point always unscrewed? Right? That's because you're shooting left helical or left offset, and everything's gonna unscrew, double bevel and single bevel. But, I'm telling you, all single bevels, A Boyer, Grizzly, um, a real steep bevel like a helix, 40 degree helix, which is also concave, so that ha that will ro over rotate. You know, and the old dicing drills are shorter versions of the helix; they rotate even more. The, the dice, Bishop Archery dicing drills we used to make um, to the to the 600 600 grain single bevel that I still make now for the buffalo hunters, they can all unscrew. 
right babel, left babel. And let's say it only happens to you one out of a hundred times. It's one too many. Um, we've done so many test trials. We've had times where it would happen with all different brands. Could be a 25 degree single babel, not just Bishop Archery single babel, all single babels. And we would have it happen over and over again. I'd say close to one out of 10 times where I would have a lifetime warranty. Okay, we still do. And guys would shoot and they'd say, I, I, my arrow only went in this, you know, three inches into a little deer and I had an 800 grain arrow with a Bishop Archery single bevel and can I send it back, it broke. And I say, well, here's how you look and get the shank and the threads. By the way, that right there weighs about 73 grains. So it's hard to make a 100 grain broadhead, machine broadhead tough. That's why. I got a 100 grain broadhead coming out though that is tough. I ain't gonna tell you how I did it, but. Um, so I tell them how to get this out of your insert or your insert outsert. And they look and say, oh, I don't see that in there. <laughs> I already know where the broadhead is. If you got a six or 800 grain arrow and you recover the animal, Thank God, because that's not good penetration. I'm sorry. Thank God, you know, but I already know where it is. I said, you go check the gut pilot. No, I would, why would it be in the gut pilot? I said, come, it come unscrewed. And guys call me on the phone. I tell them this, disclose it to them this whole time. All single bubbles, you know, could happen. And um, the guy, oh, I'm going to go out there with a metal detector. My wife's going to kill me. I paid a bunch of money for this product. Okay, fine. Goes out there, and you can see the gut pile. You can see blood all over the guy's hands. Just look how tough this your broadheads are. It's awesome. I'm like, thinking, that's not much of a test. It didn't. The arrow didn't even do anything. It just barely went in there, and the broadhead unscrewed itself and fell off. So, left bevel, right bevel, um, long three to one single bevel, short non Ashby style single bevel. 25 degree Ashby style single bevel, 45 degree non Ashby style single bevel, um, concave single bevel, convex single bevel, um, triangle shaped single bevel, they all come unscrewed. If the guy would have shot the animal with a rage broadhead, it would have passed right through. And I seen rage broadheads hit a rib and just, just watch the outdoor channel, right? of guys celebrating when their arrow gets driven in like this far and they got a 15 yard quartering away shot and I'm just thinking, oh my God, or broadside shot. And you see the animal running away like this, I'm thinking, oh my God. But a rage broadhead would have passed straight through, you know, or a wide cut expandable. I'm not trying to pick on rage, just they're, they're the largest, they probably always will be. They got the most, best marketing by far. Millions of dollars in marketing alone. So um, when the marketing, that's more important than the product in our tree. It, it's almost everything. Look at McDonald's too. You don't get the best burgers there, but they sell the most. Um, anyways, I digress. I've had guys guys shoot like this, you know, through a body cavity of you know, an animal where they technically get a pass through, don't hit a bone or anything. And then they say they can't find their broad end. It's because it's it so much uh, impact on your single bevel and force, and it, it come, becomes unscrewed. That's the dirty secret that they don't tell you about single bevel broad ends. That's the dirty secret that broad end manufacturers, you know, all the broad end manufacturers, the mainstream broad end manufacturers make the single bevel broad ends right now. They don't know themselves. They just know they can sell a bunch of single bevel broad ends. Do I hate single bevel broadheads? No, I love them, and I, I love them now, and I developed a whole different kind of single bevel broadhead that is the opposite of the Ashby reports. Shorter, steeper, higher number bevels, shorter, thicker blades, because it manipulates the bevel too, bi-directional mechanical advantage, and everybody would cite the Ashby reports, send to me, say I'm doing it wrong, put on all the chat words, I'm doing it wrong, but then these same broadhead labels would come out with single bevel broadheads that are shorter, thicker, not 25 degree bevels anymore, the number's higher, when you're all telling me I was doing it wrong. But now, you all wanna make your shorter, thicker, higher degree bevel, and then you still cite the Ashby reports. So, um, I tried telling you so over and over again, and I'm, right now I'm telling you so. Single bevel broadheads, if you like them and they work for you, that's great. 
But there's a lot of things about single bevel broadheads that the archery industry doesn't know and doesn't tell you about. And uh, those are stuff. I might make a super wide single bevel machine head. Guy, guy's capacity is about one and a, one, one and a quarter inch, one, 1. 1.4 inch cut is about the biggest you can make a two blade machine head single, single or double bevel machine head. Um, with a jumbo three, we know how to do blade over shaft design. We know how to do one and three quarter inch cut. Um, we have the capacity to make a four inch wide cut single bevel. And I don't think no, nobody else is gonna figure out how to do it or what we're doing. Um, they'll try, but uh, I've got smarter. I trust less and less and less and less people, which is, and I go out in the forest more and more and more, which is probably uh, probably a good thing. Um, but anyways, when I put those out, I probably won't be shooting them because the three blade, um, big, huge, gaping triangle, um, 60 degree bevel, even a Montec, a big hole like this, is really nice, and that's what a 60 degree um, three blade does. Even a wimpy Montec with thin, super th the super thin blades, I'd call it, super long, and just uh, wants to uh, bend, bend, and not spin test when you hit something hard, or the, you know tip over the like a needle, uh, the um, the tip. Um, why can they have edge bevel integrity with such thin blades? Well, they got a 60 degree bevel. 60 degree uh, double bevel three blades a pretty a pretty sweet thing for North American game. Um, from a Wen Wenzel Woodsman, which I, I got many pastures with Wenzel Woodsmans and 40 pound you know trad bows and everything else. Um, they're a pretty good tool to use. Now, if you love you shooting your um, longbow with a grizzly single bevel or a boy or single bevel, then keep doing that. That's awesome. That's awesome too. You know, find what works for you. But we're just going to put out what's the best thing for us. We don't need to make, you know, money. And go. I just need to put out stuff, do research and development, and then get my money back. I, I don't need to go and um, try to say, you got to buy cold carbon 72 for me so you epoxy your threads in. You got to go buy a three blade jumbo three broadhead for me because single bubbles are junk. I don't need to do that, okay? Um, I don't need to be in the in crowd. I don't need to do, I don't. I'd rather puke, um, but I think it's important somebody to tell you the truth about single bevel broadheads that single bevel broadhead broadhead manufacturers um, don't even know themselves. Um, so when we when single bevels get into the mainstream, I'm kind of worried. Now, can a single bevel bone breach if you epoxy that single bevel in with a nice thousand to two thousand grain arrow? Can it bone breach things that nothing else in the world can bone breach? If the bevel holds up, absolutely. And that's where a single bevel is way better than a double bevel. I'd say click here to see why single bevels are awesome. Click here to see why single bevels suck. Click here to see why double bevels are the best. Click here, I don't know how to do any of that. You just have to watch out for those videos if I can get time to put them out and uh, get one of my kids to mix this video. Yeah.